Draw the cumulative frequency curve by plotting cumulative frequency against upper class boundaries. The upper class boundaries are usually half of a unit greater than the upper class limits. What are the upper class limits of this data set? We might go to the previous slides in order to see those values. These values are the limits of the classes. These values are the upper class limits and these are the lower class limits. The upper class boundaries are usually half of a unit greater than these values, which are the upper class limits. And the lower class boundaries are usually half of a unit less than the lower class limits. We'll therefore go back to our cumulative frequency curve. These are the upper class boundaries that we have here, which are half of a unit greater than their respective upper class limits. We will therefore plot 10.5 against 3. 10.5 with the upper boundaries going on the x axis and the cumulative frequency going on the y axis. As a matter of fact, unless otherwise stated, anything that has to do with frequency, whether frequency in its pure form or cumulative frequency, we will place those on the vertical axis. Three units with respect to the cumulative frequency axis and there we will have our first point. Then the next pair of data. We have 20.5 and the its corresponding cumulative frequency will be 10. 20.5 with 10. Next, upper class boundary with respect to the horizontal axis, 30.5. Cumulative frequency corresponding to 19. And our point will be there. Next pair of corresponding value. Upper class boundary, 40.5, and the corresponding cumulative frequency is 38. Do not forget that anything that has anything to do with frequency will be on the vertical axis unless otherwise stated. 50.5 for the upper class boundaries. And 38. And we'll finish up with 60.5 all the way there. And we'll go up to 40. Notice that it's a little bit off the grid. You know, trying to get this thing to be very conservative in terms of space. There we have it. Finally, we will construct our curve, or just draw the curve. We imagine. However, the curve cannot be left hanging. What do we mean when we say that the curve cannot be left hanging? If the curve is drawn like this, by making use of these points, the curve will be right here and not on the lowest level. So it cannot be so to speak, off the ground. Therefore, we need to include a point that touches the horizontal axis. It must touch the axis where the upper class boundary of the class previous to the first would have been. The class that we used first is 10.5 for the upper class boundary. The one that we are going to use for where the curve will touch the axis 
is where the upper class boundary of the class previous to this one would have been. And it's not very difficult to figure out. The sequence of upper class boundaries going down is 30.5, 20.5, 10.5. And we see that it is going down by 10 each time. And if it is going down by 10 each time, and the one previous to this will be the result of subtracting 10 from 10.5. And that will give us 0 0.5. Next in sequence is 0 0.5, where the curve touches the x-axis. And where the curve touches the x-axis, the value of y is equal to 0. Or we may say, where the curve touches the horizontal axis, the value of the cumulative frequency is equal to 0. Right there. And we will therefore complete our cumulative frequency curve. It has to be smooth and well representative of the data. The cumulative frequency curve is a smooth curve that passes through all of the points. And there we have the cumulative frequency curve as smooth as a cumulative frequency curve can be. For access to hundreds of free videos, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, Richard James Mathematics Resources. For unlimited access to thousands of exclusive full-length videos, please subscribe to our Vimeo channel, Richard James Mathematics Resources.